Metasurface Design. An overview of theory, applications, and simulations. The outline of this tutorial is Theoretical explanations Historical parts Applications Python code, automated structures in HFSS HFSS simulations And finally, in the last part, the results will be discussed. In the first part of the tutorial, with the title of Theoretical Explanation, we will discuss different theoretical aspects of metasurface design. First, we present some background information on metasurfaces. Next, we will explain how to calculate the phase of each of the elements of metasurface. Then, we showcase formulas for different configurations of metasurface. And finally, we present some examples of different configurations of metasurface. Let's explain some background information to be more familiar with the concept of metasurfaces. Metasurfaces are artificially structured materials designed to control electromagnetic waves, they consist of an array of elements, often called metaatoms, that can independently manipulate the amplitude, phase, and polarization of incident waves. The ability to steer and control waves comes from introducing specific phase shifts at each element of the metasurface. In the next part of the tutorial, we try to explain how we can obtain the formula for the required phase of each of the metasurface elements. In this slide, we show how to calculate metaatom phases. The formula provided in the slide is used to calculate the required phase shift for each element of a reflect array, which is a type of metasurface designed to reflect and direct waves in specified directions. Let's break down the formula into manageable chunks. Distance R calculation. This part calculates the distance between the feed point, XCOR, YCOR, ZCOR, and each element location, XI, YI, ZI. This distance plays a crucial role in phase adjustments because the phase shift introduced by an element depends on the distance from the feed point due to the propagation of the wave. Elevation adjustment, this term accounts for the elevation angle theta of the reflected beam direction, shown with theta dir, and the azimuth angle of the beam direction, which is shown with phi dir. Imagine a flashlight beam being tilted at an angle, this term models the phase shifts needed to steer the reflected wave toward a desired direction. Confirmality adjustment, this corrects for any element height, zi, and how it affects the steering of the beam. If the metasurface is not perfectly flat, or if we intentionally introduce offsets in height, this term adjusts the phase accordingly. OAM phase, this final term adds an OAM, orbital angular momentum, mode, introducing a spiral-like phase pattern. When the value of OAMM, the OAM mode index, is non-zero, it causes the wavefront to carry a helical phase structure, leading to an OAM beam. This is useful for generating vortex beams or beams with orbital angular momentum. Now we will discuss formulas for different configurations of metasurface. For a broadside case with a flat metasurface, the desired direction angles are theta dir equals zero and phi dir equals zero. This makes the elevation adjustment term effectively zero because sin theta equals zero. Confirmality adjustment term simplifies as well since cos zero equals one. Thus, in this scenario, the primary concern is to ensure that all elements of the metasurface introduce a phase shift based on their distance from the feed point. Formula simplification for broadside, this reduced formula calculates the phase shift based purely on the distance from the feed to each element. This configuration is simple and effective for reflecting waves perpendicular to a flat metasurface. For a broadside case with confirmality of elements, the metasurface introduces height variations in the elements. Let's say we have a metasurface where each element, i, has a different height zi. The main effect of this offset is to introduce phase adjustments based on the element's varying heights. Desired direction angles could still be theta equals zero and phi equals zero, but the confirmality adjustment term becomes more significant here to account for the varying heights. Formula with height offset, the extra z term helps compensate for the differing heights, ensuring that all elements reflect in phase despite their physical offsets. When we want to steer the beam at specific angles, the desired direction angles are now theta is not equal to zero, or phi is not equal to zero. The elevation adjustment and confirmality adjustment terms now play a central role in calculating the phases. These terms ensure that each element contributes the correct phase shift to steer the beam toward the desired angles. The formula for steered beam, this formula allows you to steer the beam towards any direction by carefully choosing theta and phi. Finally, to create beams with OAM. 
we introduce the OAM phase term based on the coordinates of each element, x, y. The OAM mode index OAMM determines the number of twists in the wave front. Full formula with OAM. In this complete formula, the first part accounts for distance-based phase adjustments. The second part steers the beam using the desired elevation and azimuth angles. The final part introduces a helical phase to generate OAM beams. In this slide, we are showing element phases for different configurations examples of metasurfaces. Broadside beam with flat metasurface. Broadside beam with a concave metasurface. Broadside beam with a convex metasurface. Convex metasurface directing the beam at 60 degrees. Broadside beam with orbital angular momentum, mode 3, in a convex metasurface. Broadside beam with orbital angular momentum, mode 10, in a convex metasurface. Broadside beam with orbital angular momentum, mode 20, in a convex metasurface. Broadside beam with orbital angular momentum, mode 3, in a concave metasurface. Broadside beam with orbital angular momentum, mode 10, in a concave metasurface. Broadside beam with orbital angular momentum, mode 20, in a concave metasurface. Beam directed at 60 degrees with orbital angular momentum, mode 3, with a convex metasurface. Beam directed at 60 degrees with orbital angular momentum, mode 3, with a concave metasurface. Historical Timeline of Metasurfaces 1960s to 1970s, Development of Reflector Rays Reflector rays were originally conceived as an alternative to parabolic reflectors. Traditional parabolic reflectors, while effective, were bulky and inflexible in terms of shaping beams. Reflector rays emerged as flat surfaces composed of a grid of resonant elements, like dipole antennas, designed to introduce specific phase shifts to incident electromagnetic waves, effectively shaping and directing the reflected beam. 1980s to 1990s, Refinement of Reflector Rays Research in this period focused on improving reflector ray designs, using more sophisticated elements, and refining their analytical models. The goal was to mimic the behavior of traditional reflectors with a much lower profile. Reflector rays found increasing use in satellite communications, where weight and size constraints were critical. 2000s, Emergence of Electromagnetic Metamaterials the term metamaterial gained popularity, referring to materials engineered to have properties not found in nature, such as negative refractive index. Researchers began exploring how arrays of specially designed elements, metamaterial elements, could control electromagnetic waves with unprecedented precision. The concept of metasurfaces was introduced as a 2D analog of 3D metamaterials, offering a new way to manipulate waves using subwavelength sized elements. 2010 to 2015, Growth of tunable and active metasurfaces. Advances in materials science and fabrication techniques led to the development of tunable metasurfaces. By using elements with adjustable properties, such as varactor diodes or MEM structures, researchers created metasurfaces that could dynamically control wave fronts. The idea of coding metasurfaces also emerged, where elements were designed with digital codes, zeros and ones, representing different phase responses. This laid the groundwork for programmable surfaces. 2016 to 2018, Introduction of Intelligent Reflecting Surfaces, IRS. The concept of Intelligent Reflecting Surfaces, IRS, was introduced to reflect and optimize incident electromagnetic waves using advanced algorithms and programmable elements. These new metasurfaces combined traditional reflector rays with smart control electronics to dynamically shape and steer beams in real time. The elements could be reconfigured through external control signals, allowing the IRS to adapt to changing environments. IRS was seen as a promising technology for improving wireless communication networks, especially in the context of 5G and beyond. 2019, present, advances in IRS technology. Researchers have focused on enhancing IRS with better reconfigurability, energy efficiency, and integration with machine learning algorithms. New materials such as tunable liquid crystals, graphene-based structures, and electronically controlled metaatoms have been investigated to improve the performance and adaptability of IRS. IRS technology is now at the forefront of research in wireless communication and signal processing, promising to reshape how signals are transmitted and received in dynamic environments. Applications of Metasurfaces and IRS Enhancing Wireless Communication Capacity 
Metasurfaces and IRS can focus signals toward specific receivers by dynamically adjusting the phase shifts of their elements. This capability reduces interference and enhances signal strength, thus increasing the capacity and reliability of wireless networks. IRS can augment MIMO systems by intelligently reflecting signals to increase the number of independent communication paths. This expands the available degrees of freedom, leading to higher data rates and improved spectral efficiency. The IRS can extend the coverage of wireless networks by intelligently reflecting signals to reach shadowed or dead zones. This is crucial for indoor environments, urban canyons, or areas with dense obstructions. Spectral and energy efficiency improvements. IRS and metasurfaces can be programmed to minimize signal energy loss and reduce power consumption by directing signals in an optimal manner. This is particularly important in green communication networks, where power efficiency is critical. By dynamically reconfiguring the reflected signals, IRS can mitigate interference between users in dense environments, improving the overall spectral efficiency of the network. Security and Privacy in Communications IRS can control the reflection of signals to create artificial interference zones for eavesdroppers. This helps in securing wireless communications by controlling the spatial distribution of the signal. Metasurfaces can steer signals towards intended users while nulling the signal in other directions, enhancing privacy and reducing the risk of unauthorized reception. Sensing and Imaging Applications By adjusting the reflected waves, IRS can be used to perform environment sensing and radar functions. The reflected waves can provide information about objects in the vicinity, making them useful for applications like indoor positioning and motion detection. Metasurfaces can manipulate the wavefronts to generate holographic images. This can be used in advanced imaging systems, virtual reality, VR, and augmented reality, AR, applications. Metasurfaces with programmable capabilities can aid in imaging through walls or dense media by manipulating waves to penetrate obstacles and reconstruct an image on the other side. Reconfigurable optical and microwave systems. Metasurfaces are widely used to create reconfigurable lenses, mirrors, and holograms in optical systems. This includes lenses that can focus or defocus light on demand, useful in cameras, telescopes, and microscopes. Metasurfaces can be designed to switch between different radiation patterns or polarizations in microwave communication systems, allowing for flexible and adaptive antenna designs. Wireless power transfer and energy harvesting. IRS can be used to focus energy beams for efficient wireless power transfer to specific devices. This can help in charging multiple devices simultaneously or delivering power to IoT sensors in remote locations. Metasurfaces can be programmed to direct electromagnetic energy towards energy harvesting devices, improving the efficiency of energy collection from ambient signals. 5G and beyond enabling intelligent network architectures. IRS is seen as a key enabler of 5G and 6G networks by supporting ultra-reliable and low-latency communications, URLLC, massive connectivity, and high-capacity data transmissions. With real-time programmable control, IRS can adapt to changing network conditions, user mobility, and dynamic interference scenarios to maintain optimal network performance. Python code, automated structures in HFSS. In this part, we explain the three parts of the Python codes that will be used to automate the creation of the structures in the HFSS environment. These parts include JSON underscore data underscore creator dot py, code explanation. Generate underscore HFSS underscore script dot py, code explanation. Plotter dot py, code explanation. Now let's focus on the JSON underscore data underscore creator dot py. Packages required, numpy, a library for numerical computations, especially with arrays and matrices. Pandas, a library for data manipulation and analysis. Sippy, a library for scientific and technical computing. Matplotlib. Installing required packages, to install these packages, open a command prompt or terminal and run. Pip, install, numpy, pandas, sippy, matplotlib. Python code explanation, step 1. Importing packages. Numpy, NP handles numerical operations and array manipulations. Pandas, PD used for handling tabular data, reading, and saving CSV or JSON files. Sippy.constants.speed underscore of underscore light provides the speed of light constant, which is required for calculating wavelength. 
Step 2. Defining load underscore unit underscore cell underscore data function. Purpose, loads reflection phase versus size data from a CSV file into two arrays, phases and sizes. PD read underscore CSV, reads the CSV file located at file underscore path. Dot to underscore numpy, converts the columns to numpy arrays for easier manipulation. Step 3. Defining calculate underscore patch underscore size function. Purpose, determines the appropriate size of the patch based on the calculated target phase. Process, finds the index, IDX, where the difference between the calculated target underscore phase and existing phases is smallest. Returns the corresponding size from the sizes array. Step 4. Defining pre underscore calculate underscore data function. Purpose, main function to calculate phase and patch data, and save them in files. Parameters, output underscore file, the name of the JSON file where patch data will be saved. Phase underscore data underscore file, the name of the CSV file where phase data will be saved. Step 5. Load reflection data. Purpose, load the reflection phase versus size data from the CSV file, phase underscore versus underscore size dot CSV. Step 6. Defining parameters. Frequency, this code uses 10 GHz as an example. For the simulation, we will use 30 GHz as the operating frequency of the meta surface. Wavelength calculation, this converts the speed of light, in meters per second, to millimeters per second and divides by frequency to obtain the wavelength. Wave number, K, this is calculated as 2 pi divided by wavelength. Step 7. Example values. Direction angles, the underscore dir, phi underscore dir, is for theta, and phi directions in degrees. Feed coordinates, x underscore cor, y underscore cor, z underscore cor position of the feed antenna. Diameter, rad, the overall diameter of the array in millimeter. Cell spacing, weightm, the distance between unit cells in the array. OAM mode, OAM underscore m orbital angular momentum mode, set as an example. F divided by D ratio, FOD ratio of focal length to diameter. Focal length, F calculated as FOD multiplied by rad. Step 8. Calculate the height parameter. Calculates the height parameter using the formula, rad powered by 2, divided by, 16 multiplied by F. Step 9. Set conformal mode. Determines whether the surface is convex or concave. Step 10. Generate coordinate grid. Creates a grid of points within the given radius using np.mesh grid. XI underscore range and YI underscore range are the coordinate ranges. Step 11. Calculate angular phase. Computes the angular phase shift using the arctangent of YI and XI. Step 12. Initialize phase data. Creates an empty 2D array to store the calculated phase values. Step 13. Loop through the grid. Iterates over all grid points and checks if they fall within the radius. Step 14. Calculate the height and distance. Computes the height zi and the distance are from the feed coordinates. Step 15. Calculate phase shift. Calculates the phase shift for each grid point. Step 16. Calculate modified phase in degrees. Converts the calculated phase into degrees and adds a reference phase. Step 17. Store phase in 2D array. Stores the calculated phase in the 2D array. Step 18. Determine patch size. Determines the size of the patch based on the calculated phase. Step 19. Append patch data. Appends the calculated data to the patch underscore data list. Step 20. Save phase data to CSV. Saves the 2D phase data as a CSV file. Step 21. Save patch data to JSON. Saves the patch data as a JSON file. Step 22. Execute the main function. Calls the pre-calculate-data function if the script is run directly. This detailed line-by-line -line explanation covers the entire script with the required package installations. Next, we need to investigate generate underscore hfss underscore script.py. Prerequisites. 
This script uses an embedded Python environment within HFSS. This environment may have limitations compared to a full-featured Python installation. HFSS software, ensure that HFSS is installed and that your project is set up. Python code explanation, step 1. Importing packages. Script ENV, a special HFSS package for interacting with ANSYS Electronics Desktop. It enables automation through the HFSS scripting interface. JSON, used to read the pre-calculated patch data stored in a JSON file. Step 2. Defining the main function, main. This function serves as the entry point of the script, which encapsulates all logic required for generating the metasurface design in HFSS. Step 3. Initializing HFSS environment. Script ENV, initialize. This initializes the HFSS environment to allow Python scripts to control it. Odesktop.restore window, restores the main HFSS window if it is minimized or hidden. Step 4. Setting up active project and design. O project, sets the active project in HFSS to project 1. Make sure the name matches your actual project in HFSS. O design, sets the active design to HFSS design 1. Again, ensure that this name matches the design within your HFSS project. O editor, sets the active editor to 3D modeler, which is responsible for 3D modeling operations like creating and modifying 3D objects. Step 5. Loading pre-calculated patch data. Purpose, loads the pre-calculated patch data from a JSON file. Make sure that the file path is correctly specified. JSON.load, reads the JSON data into a Python dictionary slash list for easy access. Step 6. User-defined dimensions. Purpose, sets the dimensions of each layer, ground, dielectric, and top patch, and other parameters such as cell spacing. Weightim represents the size of the unit cell. Step 7. Loop through the precalculated patch data. Purpose loops through each entry in the precalculated patch data and extracts the values for each patch, coordinates, and size. Step 8. Centering the top patches. Purpose shifts the center of the top patches by half the cell spacing, weightim, in both x and y directions to center them within each cell. Step 9. Creating the ground layer. Purpose creates a rectangular box representing the ground layer using the HFSS API. Box attributes, name, names each ground layer using the loop index, I. Material, sets the material to PEC, perfect electric conductor. Solve inside, set to false because perfect electric conductor should not be solved inside. Step 10. Creating the dielectric, PCB, layer. Purpose, creates a rectangular box for the dielectric, PCB, layer on top of the ground layer. Color, sets the dielectric layer's color to gray using RGB values, 128, 128, 128. Step 11. Creating the top metallic patch. Purpose, creates a rectangular box for the top metallic patch centered within the cell. Centering, the X position and Y position are shifted by patch underscore size slash 2 to center the patch within each cell. Step 12. Execute the main function. Purpose, ensures that the main function is called only when the script is executed directly, not when imported as a module. Guidelines for running the script in HFSS, ensure HFSS is installed, the script interacts directly with HFSS, so the software must be installed and configured. Verify project and design names, ensure that project 1 and HFSS design 1 match your project and design names in HFSS. Check file paths, confirm that the file path is correct and accessible. Running the script, open HFSS and navigate to the scripting or Python script section. Load and run the script from within HFSS to automate the metasurface generation. Summary, this script automates the creation of a metasurface design by leveraging precalculated patch data. It reads data from a JSON file, sets up layers in HFSS, and ensures that each element is positioned and sized correctly based on the precalculated information. By carefully following this line-by-line -line explanation, you can understand and modify the script as needed for your specific use case. Finally, we explain the plotter.py. This Python script is responsible for visualizing the 2D phase data that was generated in the earlier calculation step. 
It reads the phase data from a CSV file and plots it as an image using matplotlib. This is analogous to the imagesc function in MATLAB. Packages required, numpy, for efficient numerical operations. Pandas, for reading the CSV file into a structured format and converting it to a number py array. Matplotlib, for creating and saving the plot. Step 1. Importing packages. Numpy, NP used for numerical operations and efficient array manipulations. Pandas, PD reads and handles tabular data from CSV files. Matplotlib.pyplot, PLT creates visualizations, such as plotting 2D phase distributions. Step 2. Defining plot underscore phase underscore data function. Purpose, defines a function that reads 2D phase data from a CSV file and creates a plot which is saved as a PNG image. Parameters, phase underscore data underscore file, name of the CSV file that contains the 2D phase data. Output underscore image underscore file, name of the PNG image file where the plot will be saved. Step 3. Loading the 2D phase data. Purpose, reads the phase data from a CSV file using pandas. PD read underscore CSV, reads the CSV file without headers, indicated by header equals none, and converts it into a pandas data frame. Dot to underscore numpy, converts the data frame into a number py array for easier plotting and numerical operations. Step 4. Plotting the phase data. Purpose, plots the 2D array using matplotlib. PLT dot figure, creates a new figure with a size of 8 by 8 inches. PLT.imshow displays the 2D array as an image using the color map jet to visually distinguish the different phase values. Parameters, kmap equals jet, the jet color map provides a smooth gradient that is commonly used in visualizations, similar to MATLAB's default color map. Origin equals lower, sets the origin to the lower left corner of the plot, making the plot easier to interpret. PLT.colorbar adds a color bar next to the plot to indicate the phase values, in degrees. PLT.title, sets the title of the plot to, phase distribution. PLT.label and PLT.alabel, label the X and Y axes in millimeters to indicate that the plot corresponds to physical dimensions. Step 5. Saving the plot as an image. PLT.savefig, saves the plotted image to the specified output file, output underscore image underscore file, which in this case is phase underscore plot dot png. PLT dot close, closes the current plot to free up memory, especially important when running scripts that generate multiple plots. Step 6. Calling the main function. Purpose, checks if the script is being run directly, and not imported as a module, and executes the plot underscore phase underscore data function. Plot underscore phase underscore data, phase underscore data dot csv, Phase underscore plot dot png specifies that the function should read from phase underscore data dot csv and save the output plot as phase underscore plot dot png. Summary, this script is designed to read a 2D phase array from a CSV file using pandas. Visualize the 2D phase data as an image using matplotlib. Save the resulting plot as a PNG image. Now that we explained all parts of the codes, let's begin the HFSS simulation. The first part of HFSS simulation is to design the horn feed antenna illuminating the meta surface. We click on New to create a new project. Then, we click on HFSS to create an HFSS environment within our project. We then use the Component Libraries option in the View menu to create a pre designed circular horn antenna. We set the parameters of the horn according to the video. Next, we create the open boundary around the antenna and we set the frequency to 30 GHz. Next, we add the analysis setup.
Now we validate the HFSS setup and we run the simulation. After the end of the simulation, we add the 3D and 2D radiation pattern. As we can see the 3 dB beam width on one side of the pattern is approximately 45 degrees. In the next part, we need to simulate the metaatom element of the metasurface and analyze the reflection coefficient of the element versus its size. We first start to draw the 3D model of the metaatom which can be dynamically reconfigured in terms of the size of the patch and in terms of the size of the element itself. For the purpose of this tutorial, we use the element size of 5 mm. Now we need to create the air box around the model.
Now we set up the Floquet port, this setup is essential to be able to use periodic boundary conditions. Make sure that the HFSS solution type must be on modal to be able to run this simulation. We use coupled primary and secondary boundary conditions to resemble the periodic boundary condition. The Floquet port in HFSS should be surrounded with this type of boundary condition, as shown in the video. The boundary condition for the bottom side of the element is PEC because we are simulating a reflector A element. We add the analysis setup.
Then, we add a parametric sweep for the size of the top patch. We want to obtain the reflected phase of the element versus the size of the top patch of the antenna. Next, we validate the HFSS setup and we run the simulation. We need to set up the exported results as shown in the video. After the end of the simulation, we export the results of the reflection phase versus the patch size into the Excel file as an input factor for our Python automated code.
Now let's focus on the main design with HFSS. First, we create a project and then we create an HFSS environment within the project. Next, we use Visual Studio Code and we open the JSON underscore data underscore creator dot py. Within this file, we set up our desired parameters for the meta surface. Then we run the code. To be able to see the element phase visualization, we can run the plotter.py file. Then we need to open the generate underscore hfss underscore script dot py and within the code, we must be sure about using the same name of the project that we created and the same name of the hfss environment. We need to select the address of the patch underscore data dot json file that was previously created with the json underscore data underscore creator dot py script. Then we go to hfss and select automation. Then, we select run script. And finally, we select the generate underscore hfss underscore script dot py script. Now the meta surface starts to be created within the hfss environment. We wait until the script finishes the creation of the meta surface. Next, we set up the horn feed using the predefined structures in HFSS. We dynamically indicate the position of the feed. It is possible to run an optimization but for the purposes of this tutorial let's just put it at 60 mm above the meta surface.
We then set up the analysis and we make sure that we select at least 6 or 7 passes for mesh refinement. This is because using coarse mesh will result in non-realistic results. We set the open boundary and results for far field 3D and 2D radiation patterns. Next, we validate the HFSS setup and we run the simulation. In the last section of the tutorial, we would like to showcase some of the samples of the designs of different metasurfaces. The first design is a concave metasurface reflecting waves at broadside angles. The next configuration is a flat metaphase steering the beam at 20 degree angle.
The last example is a flat metasurface with OAM mode of order 2. We can see the rotating phases on the surface of the metasurface and the hollow beam of the OAM radiation pattern. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on metasurfaces and intelligent reflecting surfaces. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Your feedback is incredibly valuable, so feel free to leave a comment below with any questions or suggestions you might have. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content on cutting-edge technologies. Stay tuned for more insightful tutorials. Thanks again, and see you in the next video.